I assume that most of you have used this Netflix uh, free 30 day trial plan, right? Now, to be honest, guys, how many of you have laughed off at this idea of free 30 day trial plan thinking that all it would bring is losses to Netflix? But what if I tell you that it's a great customer attraction tactics for Netflix? This is called as a partial ownership strategy, which is one of the key strategies derived from behavioral economics that creates a sense of emotional attachment for the consumers. And do you know how much of the customer conversion does Netflix gets only through this partial ownership strategy? 33%. Now, that's quite impressive. In today's video, we'll discuss all about behavioral economics, how it works, pros and cons, and much, much more. Hi all, my name is Dheeraj Vaidya from wallstreetmojo.com, the home for most authentic place to learn finance and accounting. Let's get started. So let's begin by knowing, you know, what behavioral economics actually is. So behavioral economics actually studies how human psychology impacts the economic decision making of individuals, customers or organizations. Uh, think of examples like why you buy one product over another one. The whole idea behind this theory is that human beings often make decisions based on emotions, impulses or the environment that we live in rather than logic. So in short, we can say that behavioral economics actually predicts illogical human behavior. Now, in case you didn't get me yet, let me try to explain it to you with one or two real world examples. Now consider this, why do people actually delay or avoid working out even when they know its benefits? Another example, why do gamblers mostly gamble most, you know, after losing or failing? Even after, you know, they're knowing that their chances of failing or winning remains the same. Now in both cases, think of it, the reason remains the same. Most humans make decisions based on their sentiments which tells them either to be lazy bone in case of working out or keep going for the jugular in case of gambling. Now, this behavioral theory is a total contrast when it comes to the classical rational choice theory, you know, which considers uh, that humans are rational actors. And uh, it states that, you know, we are kind of unmoved by any kind of emotions or external factors and our most decisions are only made once we totally consider the pros and cons of that decision. So yes, you can say that you know, behavioral economics actually shows us the mirror that we are not totally rational beings and most of the time do make bad decisions. Now, speaking of human beings, one of the key things here is that the behavioral economics derives all of its theory and data from observing and researching human behaviors in a very controlled lab environmental settings. So this is done by either conducting surveys on human behaviors or uh, using some sort of professional help, uh, such as a psychologist. Okay, guys, before moving ahead, let's look at some of the important terms used in behavioral economics that can help you understand things better. So the first one is loss aversion which basically means that people are more wary of uh, booking losses rather than making profits. Second is, you know, bounded self-interest, which means that people generally choose less satisfactory options for themselves if they know that they can help or support others. So giving charity is a classic example of bounded self-interest. And finally, we have an availability heuristics, which means that when trying to analyze the possibility of a particular decision or an outcome, people often rely on information that is easy to remember or call upon rather than the actual data. For example, you know, people may think that their shares will remain in losses if they have heard this recently on, uh, let's say, news or somewhere else. However, you know, there's a strong possibility that uh, this may not be true and they might actually end up making profit. Now, another key topic related to behavioral economics is the nudge. Let's find out what it is. 
So in behavioral economics, actually a nudge is an incentive or a way to entice people to make certain economic decisions like choosing one product over another product or let's say buying things on impulse. An example of this would be that of supermarkets where you know things are placed right in front of our eyes. Now, what does this do? Makes us buy things that weren't even on our shopping list. Hope you get the gist now. So now that you have a fair understanding of behavioral economics, let's look at some of its advantages and how it impacts both uh, the individuals and the businesses. So typically a company uses behavioral economics for uh, studying consumer behavior to uh, not only prepare the business plans, but also get insights uh, that help them in increasing sales. A classic example of this would be a company actually using a tagline buy one get one free now that in most cases attract more customers and help in its overall sales on the flip side by studying behavioral economics we as consumers you know can make ourselves aware of uh, certain situations where we generally you know make irrational decisions and uh, we can protect ourselves from its negative consequences also, you know, uh, a new field where uh, behavioral economics is finding its feet is the world of finance. Yes, you know, financial experts are using it for analyzing and predicting irrational investment decisions made by investors. However, critics do have a say on this topic and they have certain points to make. Firstly, you know, some critics feel that policies like the nudge have a short term impact on purchasing behavior and they die out eventually in the long run. Another criticism of uh, behavioral economics is that because these bring out interventions and uh, policies from uh, controlled lab experiments, there's a high possibility that they won't really actually work uh, in real life situations. So now these are some of the serious criticisms, but only you know time will tell whether they are true or false. Finally, it's example time. Let's look at one classic example where decision making might have been influenced by behavioral economics. You must have heard about uh, Amazon's lightning deals, right? Yes, those discounts offer that last only for a limited amount of time, like 24 hours, etc. Now ask yourself, why do people rush to buy those items, which you know, they generally wouldn't. Isn't it because of the limited time that creates a fear of missing out or FOMO? Now, this is a classic example of loss aversion principle applied by behavioral economists, where you know the product features are highlighted while at the same time pointing to the customers what they might actually lose if they don't make a decision soon. Aren't humans more afraid to lose what they have uh, rather than gain something which they don't have? See, it's all about mind games. I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future videos, then you may do so by writing about it in the comments section. Also, you know, we come up with interesting videos on finance and accounting topics regularly. So if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, then please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notifications as soon as we release the latest videos. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.